friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. We are in chapter four talking about the test design techniques and continuing ahead with our second segment which is 4.2, the black box test techniques. And here we are talking about the techniques which can be applied using black box testing approaches. As a part of today's tutorial, we'll be jumping on to the next technique of this category, which is boundary value analysis. Let's have a look and understand more about the same. In order to understand BVA, BVA is another technique which helps us to understand that what exactly uh, a scenario could be where we have similar kind of ranges just like equivalence partition. But given that boundary value analysis strictly checks on the boundaries of a given range, one inside, one outside, but it's not limited to that. A very you know, simple way to understand that the boundary value analysis tests on each and every boundary of given ranges. It is also possible that you may have just a single range provided to you as a valid input or sometime even it is combined, combined together with multiple ranges which you may have. Now multiple ranges could be any sort of collection of ranges where you have different behavior. But the point is, unlike equivalence partition, instead of testing just one test per partition, you will be testing strictly inside and outside the boundaries, just like in the example first where you see that there is a valid range and you're trying to test one right inside the left boundary and one outside the left boundary, considering the valid and invalid exactly on the boundary. Again, on the right hand side, you see one inside and one outside. So that means if we have tested these four values using two point analysis, then we have made sure ourselves that everything else in the given ranges, it will work fine. Now, for an instance, if I take an example of that the given valid range is between 1 to 10, right? Then 1, 10 are the valid inputs, which I'm testing extremely on the boundary from inside, and 0 and 11 are outside the boundary, testing as invalid inputs. If these four values are giving me desired output, then I don't need anything else as numbers to be tested to confirm that whether the scenario is working fine. But some of the organization also believe that this BVA technique, what we just understood, is not limited to taking two values per boundary. Sometimes they also take three values per boundary, just like three point analysis on the right hand side. Now here, the point is that we are trying to understand why would you consider three values and what's the logic behind that? The number one point here to understand is when you say the literal word boundary, Boundary is just not limited to inside and outside. There's also something called as on the boundary. <clears throat> Even if you have a compound wall near your house or outside your house, you do realize that if you're standing on the boundary, there's also a criteria because you're never inside the boundary or outside the boundary, but you are on the boundary. So some of the critical product testing involves such collection of values where you take three values per boundary. And here, one will be outside, one will be on, given that one is on the boundary. So say for example, again, my valid range is between one to 10, inclusive of both the values, then one is on the boundary and 10 is on the boundary. So I should take zero, one, two on the left-hand side, and I should take nine, 10, 11, where nine is inside, 10 is on the boundary, and 11 is outside the boundary. So I'll have four valid inputs here, and two invalid. That's the key difference between our two point analysis and three point analysis. So there are just two types of boundary value analysis, which organizations can pretty much make use of depending on the criticality of the scenario or criticality of the end product that how exactly I can reduce my test cases, but at the same time, not losing loopholes so that the effect can be leaked. Right? So it completely depends on your application, completely depends on the way you want to achieve the coverage. And there's no harm that any other organization would also like to go with three point analysis to figure out a better coverage. You can always do that. There's also a set of formulas which are given to you, which can be easy to evaluate the set of values, what you would need to prepare the test cases on. Like for 2PA, you can have LB, LB minus one, RB, RB minus one, where LB and RB are the boundaries of the range provided to you. For example, in our case, if I say my valid range is one to 10, 
then 1 is my LB, 10 is my RB, and LB minus 1 is 0, and RB plus 1 is 11, right? So the similar way, you can apply it in any particular given scenario, and you can come out with your set of desired test cases, right? Let's take a quick example to understand this in practicality. So here we are saying a text field in an application accepts input as the age of the user. Here, the values allowed to be accepted by the field is between 18 to 30 years of the age, right? So we are talking about accepting the age of the user. And these are inclusive of both the values. Let's apply 3PA here, that is three point analysis, and see what would be our set of values. So the given range, the valid range is 18 to 30 where the invalid range on the left is less than or equal to 17 and on the right hand side invalid range is 31 or greater right 31 and greater not or right but if i apply 3pa here i'm taking three values per boundary so the ones the answers are 17 18 19 and 29 30 31 so these will be my set of values which i can pretty much make use of to derive my test cases for this given scenario using three-point analysis of boundary values. Taking another critical example where sometimes it is also necessary to get better coverage and confidence too, but it is not limited that you should only apply one technique at a time. This is one similar scenario where we can talk about that how you can combine two techniques to get the best outputs. So look at this example. Here again I'm using the similar scenario a text field when an application accepts input at, as the age of the user. Here the user allowed to be accepted by the field is between 18 to 30 years, inclusive of both the values. But here we are trying to concatenate the BVA using two-point analysis and equivalence partition to get the best output ever. Now in that case, you don't have to further minimize your test cases because these two are two different techniques, but you are combining them to get the best set of test cases so that you can have better coverage. So don't further concatenate it or reduce the number of test cases given that the uh, BV has covered inside, then no need to take a EP value. No, you are just combining two techniques to get the best output. So apply them independently. Okay, apply them independently and get the collection of test cases which you can get by combining these two techniques. So as per BVA, you will have four test cases using two point analysis. You will have 17, 18, 30, 31. And using APA, you will have another three set of values. Like it could be anything in the first range, like say for example, 12. And in the second range, you can have it as 25. Or in the third range, you can have it as 45, right? You can take any value as per EP, right? So it's not necessary that it is fixed. You should take only those values which I just mentioned, but you can also take those which I just mentioned, right? So. Put together, BVA is a stronger technique than EP, which checks extremely on the boundary and helps you to get more critical defects and reduce your effort, but at the same time, gives you a greater confidence than equivalence partition if applied to a number system. Now, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.